how the morning breeze See how the dust eddies dance down the highway Early the sparrow that saw where he went Three eyes of the hawk as it circles the range Changing the course of his life on the wind Tossing a coin at the fork in the crossroads Oh, the poor fool, aren't you sorry for him? Pity the showman, the poor traveling showman. Many's the year since he lived by the rule. Envy of all to whom time is a master. Lives in a world of his own, the poor fool. Old winter can't find the poor traveling showman. How he must miss it, it can't be much fun. Roughing it in his luxurious trailer. I'm sorry for him as he follows the sun. generation to generation and um, we've been on the shows now I'm 50 years old been on for all the time never been anywhere else done anything else only done this all the time business is built up of, of family people. They marry into other show, show families. Uh, our particular family is, is always stuck together. We're one of, the, one of the few families that have stayed together as long as we all have in harmony. And I think why that happens is because we all have our own individual equipment. I'm running the amusement rides part of it. Brother runs the stalls, the sister runs the food concessions. The nephews and that have their own own things and uh, but we stay together as a family. Uh, if I wasn't part of the Bell family I feel that I I wouldn't be here because uh, I'm I think I'd be in some other type of life. My last name's Karadiana, but I'm Bell related through my mother. But I've got a taste of it now, and even if I broke away from them, there's no way that I'll pull out of this business now because not just the money, I love the game, you know. 
showgrounds for five years um, and worked in other industry in restaurant work and uh, yes I did I did want to get away off it and loved the first six months of it and for the next four and a half years I think I cried every day of the week to come back and because of children and commitments with schooling and so forth that kept me away for that five years anyway I've spent a bit of time in Melbourne, I've spent a bit of time in Sydney, just working different places, checking it out. Nine to five, I didn't like it. You know, seven, six days a week or whatever. So, give it all up and come back on the showgrounds. This is the life for me, it's what I was born into. And my family, they're all born in. It's hard for a showy to walk away and not come back. Well, I suppose it's my life, isn't it? You'd be lost if you wasn't on the showgrounds. You wouldn't know where you were. <laughs> had a baby and that how we done that we done the Mildura it was on the Thursday Friday Saturday we pulled down the Saturday night after, it was a night show as well midnight we started to pull down packed up left on the Sunday got the Robin Dale put up again on the Sunday evening showed the Monday pulled down Monday night moved all the gear again to the Hopeton Put the gear up there at Hopeton on Tuesday morning. Late in the afternoon, Sandra got pains and things and she had to go in the hospital. Put her in the hospital. She had a baby about eight o'clock, young Owen. We, the gear went on. We done witchy proof on the Wednesday. Got there the Wednesday morning, put up again and showed the same day. <laughs> so if you don't earn your money after that, what do you do? You know, six shows, you could say, we are done in the week. Plus had that little arm with them. But you wouldn't do that every, every year. But still, if the shows are there, you'll do them, you know. Had them wherever I was. Um, Elwyn I had in Bill Wheeler in Queensland. Owen I had in Hopeton in Victoria. And Lauren I made it back to Sydney and had her at the end of the run, didn't I, in December. We got back in the November and I had one in Sydney. But I had one in every state. Yeah. Oh, geez, Kevin, I'll tell you what. <laughs> we know we get the long reach, but I don't think we'll get... Oh, can't eat her. Yeah, it's refreshed, eh? Oh, yeah. Got a glass? Glass would be nice. Oh, you don't get glasses, Santa, <laughs> oh, <Canada, laughs> don't they? Bad enough driving all day without oh, washing glasses. Yeah, buddy, good. Good. Yeah. You must have been in the one day before 11 o'clock at night. Time comes round, we hit the northern run. Travelling round like millionaires, following up the sun. Doodly do, do, do. Just here to pack your gear and do the best you can. 
The cars are nice and shiny, painted up the caravan. The horns go to us away, we shoot, and on the road we go. To meet your friends and faces in the country town for show. Nice and shiny painted up the caravan. The horns go to us away, we shoot, and on the road we go. To meet your friends and faces in the country town for show. If you went back to Dad's time, the showmen were weren't really looked upon as a very worthy citizen type thing. We were all rogues and vagabonds. And uh, they'd always say, you know, take your clothes off their clothes lines and that type of thing, the show's in town. Yeah. Yeah. You're dreaming of the old times, but you're in the new times. You've got to stay with the new times. You can't go back to the old times. But you wish you were back in the old times. I think a lot of people think the same way. I wouldn't be the only one. Well, I'd agree with that. There's very few entertainers left on the showgrounds. There's not many jugglers or people that's doing the work that Arnold was doing the other night there with spruiking and that type of thing. They're things that in the past, they're gone. They're mainly running a business uh, through the riding devices or the stalls or whatever. The prizes are there. The prizes look like they're value for money and people give themselves up. You don't have to entice them into your stall or into your rides. People think that the value is there, and it is there too. And they'll just come and they'll give themselves up to whatever you're operating. And if they don't think it's value for money, well, they'll just give you a miss and go to the next one where they think they are getting value for money. Give me uh, 34 feet to the centre. A bit more. And I'll call this my front line. Go back a bit more. Well, he thinks he's going to put his octopus in here. He's up to another think, I think. At least uh, they are one. They've got to be 45 foot back off of that road for a start. So they must be 45 foot off the road. Yeah, on this particular point here. Right? It is right. Yeah, on his hand, because you've got the octopus up there. No, that's the rule. That's, that's the rule. Kelly's yes. law. No, that's Kelly's law. Nobody else. Anyway, they mightn't notice it for one night anyway. It would be to pull down hey. before they wake hey, up. Hey, Stephen, you're not going to put the octopus in there. I'll tell you why. Because oh. I've still got two kids' rides sitting on my truck, and I'll put my kids' rides in there if you're going to come at these stunts. All you're trying to do is cause problems. Yeah, but you're already up. It don't hold you're, the fact. He's got, he's got, up, he's got enough up. Let him put that something up. There. What's up? And the octopus is not going to well, go he's got a, he's got a family to feed. I've got a family to feed too, and I've got more kids than him. But you've got your gear up. No, I haven't got my gear up at all. My yeah. kids' gear's up. My gear's still sitting on the truck over there. Well, you're just being a nut. Because he's got the same machine as you, you don't want to trying give him to hold up me here. Out. No, of course I You are trying to hold him out. That's what you're trying to if do. If you had a butcher shop up the county, you wouldn't want me to put a butcher shop next door to you, would you? I would well, he's got just as much right to put up here as you have. Well, mark him I out. I wouldn't hold him out. He got sole rights here. What gives you the idea that you can have that on your own? What gives you the He's idea got just as much right to be put... I've got the approval of the delegates. 
What and they have allowed can't... me to have this position here. I can't here. see Mr. Carson. Oh, we haven't yeah. allowed. We're just trying to fit Well, they're going to fit me in here. No, if I can fit, I'm going to put me right here. How can they allow it without coming to me? I'm one of the delegates. You'll fix him up. We'll fix you up. It feels all right. It feels all right. You don't anyway, before you, all your arguments go down, what you've got to do is see if the thing will fit in there first. Well, that's what we're doing. Well, we're doing it, buddy. But don't sit. What's the good argument? I reckon I'm going to have wrong side of business for him. No. Stephen, I'll tell you something now. We've been mates for a long, long time. We'll put the octopus up there, and me and you will be knuckling on. Now, that's my last word on it. What do you got there? Well, I need to get off these wires a bit, but 30 feet, that'll clear them plenty. Don't worry. No, I won't worry about it. I've got a suggestion. Put him a shout of scan lights after this. Yeah, here's the center of your ride. Right. Now, what do you got there to the motor? Good enough? Let me remind you of Catherine Shea, where not me personally, but my family helped you out with the position. <coughs> What's that got to do with? At Catherine Shea. Shows different well, I, what you're doing is you're helping me out as, in return. Listen, mate, this is dog eat dog. You know that. Yeah, but you know Catherine Shea, where you had, where you got position off Bell. Yeah, what's that got to do with? Well, you can return the favour here. We weren't playing up when you were in a position up there. Listen, you haven't even got any ground on the Northern Territory, Wendy. What do you can well, I've got ground up there. I get my ground off of Elwood, not off of you. I don't do business with you. But I'm part of the family. Yeah, you're way part of the family. You're right on the end of the line, sonny. But, but Where you still, I'm still part of the family. No, you're too bombastic. And, and to uh, at Catherine Show, they helped you out with the position. Anyway, so this the... ground's too unlevel. I won't let him put up on this ground. Yeah. Yeah, you'll level up a I'll level up. After a couple of big drives, we'll go over there and we'll measure up and see if he's not too quick. No, no, no. You won't do that at all. Get up. That'll be enough. Because I'm not going to stay up here. That's all right. That's all right. I'll put the right in the car. I'll bloody own. I'll get a good one. There's always two or three delegates on different runs of shows and, and they are the ones that allocate the space. But all space is allocated on priority. Positions that bells are using now a position that my father had 50 years ago. We were in, in, uh, in exactly the same position with some of our equipment. It's, it's just it's, uh, done on priority and, and you retain your space, you know. I was working in a hotel when Roy came there with his boxing tent and then I met him. That was it. Oh, I knew him for about 12 or 18 months before we got married. And then I was on the showgrounds. So I've been on the showgrounds for 63 years. And it's a show for ladies and it's a show for everybody, boys. And it's one of the oldest and longest established touring stadiums of the British Empire. So if you get in straight away, boys, you've got a show with a guarantee. The biggest and best and the greatest value for your cash. So you shake them up on your drum and make a start, boys. Now they're cracking and jamming in the Bell Stadium. Oh, I used to always sell the tickets. I was a money collector. And cook. Oh, and cook for all the men. Oh, yes. <laughs> for the fighters. Oh, God, and you had tap ovens in them days. You didn't have all this electrical things. When we were young fellas, um, my mother and father and about 15 hard, tough fight men, we used to camp out of town and out in the riverbank for a week before the show, and only come in on show day. And we never had no power or nothing like that. So, all we had was a campfire and uh, cook on the campfire and catch your own truck at Catch and Kill, you know. I used to work on the boxing tent for my father, collecting tickets at the door. And then uh, I'd work the boxing tent, done the spruiking, um, when my brothers have been away sick, and my father's been sick, sorry, and I've had to get up and work the show. Mind you, I couldn't talk for a fortnight after. Um, strained my voice, matched up all the men and refereed and done the lot. We went to school in Sydney for a while when I was real young, and, and uh, 
we come back onto the showgrounds with my grandfather and mum and us kids and we'd all jump in the back of the trucks like all the boxers got me into the back of the trucks one night and we went for a ride with them all night long got traveling along doing overnighters or somewhere down in queensland and when i first come on the showgrounds i never even knew the word shut up but i took one tr trip in the back of the truck with the, about 10 boxes and i knew everything i started fighting when i was about 12 year old i suppose from then on i went till i was about 35 close to 40. that's what i've done but um everybody had to do something you know not like nowadays they don't do much at all <laughs> as soon as you could walk do something get around a bit that was it you had to do something of all the little ones they'd be doing tumbling acts juggling acts or something they all had to do something well it's part about mine was a bit harder being with the boxing tent you had to learn to fight so <laughs> brother he was the same we used to travel in the back of the trucks we the men we only had the one truck we never had no cars or nothing like that and mum would travel in the front with dad and all the men and the kids would be in the in the back of this big semi and it was an eye-catching thing and had to drive through a town and the general public really hadn't seen that type of truck before and and they'd stop in the street, you know, and they'd look at it go past, and and uh, you'd have all the men would be sitting in the back of it at the door, and they'd be sort of sitting there with their legs hanging out the front, maybe whistling, whistling at the girls and that type of thing as they were going through the street and <laughs> Yahoo and going on, and people used to just stand there and stare at it, you know, here's what's that? And anyway, people had realised then it was Bell's touring stadium was going through and. Odd times the committee people would see that machine going through the town and they they say, boy, gee, he's running a nice outfit, you know, he must have a good show and we'll invite him to our show. And so it opened a few doors up for Dad and got him into a lot of shows that he, he may not have been able to do otherwise. Here's a boy, many times that is a gentleman, I call him Hanson. He's a new beginner, ladies and gentlemen, and he hasn't got the trademarks of the professional fighter. He's a pretty clever little fella. He says, ladies and gentlemen, he don't worry if they're a bit heavier, what weight they are. He'll tackle them. He'll undertake to knock them over. Now, this little Queensland champion, ladies and gentlemen, I'll probably match him here today. Anyhow, don't fail to see him tackle some of the local boys. Now, you're going to have a go. Just stay where you are. Shake them up. Shake them up. And then when you got to a town, they'd have to go around then and suss out different people and that type of thing to find out who their local fighters were. Oh, right. You can get to look fair dinkum. And anyway, once he located his, his uh, local, then he would, he would have to arrange for the men to come down to the show and he wasn't going to knock them about, he didn't want to get them down there and then knock them out and, and to make them look bad. Once you had a local and you had him on the board, and Dad then could say, well, Tommy Baker's going to fight this session, your local butcherman or your local policeman or the footballer, everyone knew him, he was a local identity and a lot of people, they'd then go into the, the tent to see their local fellow fight. It's worth nothing if you happen to get the Indian death club, do you? Because you're so squeal Lou Murdy, you understand? Now, he's as strong as an ox, you understand? And he uh, puts a lot out of action. Not too bad yourself. Now, you say you're not too bad yourself. But what style do you want to wrestle? Catch as catch can. He wrestles three styles. Catch as catch can, uh, jiu-jitsu, or Greek or Roman, you understand? Now, I'll tell you what I'll do with you. You can have a go, all right, but when you get in with this Maori bloke, uh, he, you're after the cash boys, he's after you. If he can place your shoulders fairly and squarely on the map for three clear, clear seconds, that'll be a pinfall. Another way he'll attempt to beat you, he'll apply some hold that'll deal out enough punishment to make you scribble to turn it up. And that'll be a submission for you, understand? Now, do you want to carry on for a cash prize of $10? Yeah, okay. Well, all right. 
No old fart, no punching, no kicking allowed. What do you want to tell him, Mowry? If I buy another Mowry, I'll buy the money another Mowry. Yes, sir. You go for your life, but look out for the Indian death block, son. If he gets it on, he'll only ask you once to give in. In them days, there was no dole or nothing like that. And men, men had got to work, you know, and they'd probably just go out to any Aboriginal camps or just go out and there'd be that many wanting to go with you, you'd have to, you know, knock them back with a stick, really. <laughs> but, um, they got too much regulations on them down south now, you know, that um, you get have a doctor travelling with you and all that sort of thing, and just made it too hard. And, um, Oh, times too, like, you have to pay, say, 15 men. Well, nowadays it's pretty well impossible, you know, to have that many people working for you. Because in the old days, they'd work for nothing, hardly, just their tucker and a few bob, you know. But, um, nowadays a different story. <laughs> that finished we got into all these games and uh, just went with the uh, times and got into these rides whatever comes up whatever's making the money you got to get so it's, one time you relied on your ability you had to be able to get up and talk and spruik as we call it and um, there's a lot of people very good at it and um, you get up there with two or three thousand people in front of you had to convince them to get the goods you know to get them into your tent but uh, nowadays you don't have to do that, just sit in the ticket box now. <laughs> Hold your hand out. I want you to fix your rent up. The bloke's coming down here to collect the money. Aye. The committee's coming down here to collect the money. I want you to fix your rent up. Oh, God. Just get out there. Where did it go? I want to get up earlier in the day. Have you collected everybody else's? Yes, I've only got you to go. Well, what is it? I've got to get Tammy's too. Yeah, we can go to her. That's the river block. Fifty-eight feet, one hundred and seventy-four dollars for you. Mm -hmm. Sixty-six dollars for Tammy. You must have done all right, giving me the fifty-dollar bill. Everyone else has paid me in toll. Oh, that's paid with big money. So you get Brian's now, and I'm for theirs there, and that's about it. All right. All right. See you later. All right. Have you drummed up there and... Before the Mardi Gras starts to go up. Before the Mardi Gras starts, you have them all ready. It'll be hard to get one house before it starts. Yeah, you will. Hey, Michael, I've been looking for you. Where have you been all morning? I sent over for you. You never come over. What for? I've got to yeah, do look, work, mate. What the, what the for? Last night up there. Now, I told you not to go knocking that bloke over. What bloke? That Aboriginal bloke. He was putting up a good fight. Well, I'm not going to knock him over. 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 Well
And what, did you have to be a mug lamb and hit him on the chin and knock him out? I'm not going to sit around playing games on the No, but I told you not to do it. Why not? Why don't you listen to what I tell you? We're here to get a quid, not to be mug lairs and be skiting to all our mates how good a fighter we are. He's trying to rubbish. knock me out. I wasn't Knocking gonna... some poor in defenceless bloke out. I wasn't going to take any rubbish. He's trying to knock me out. No, what? you're there. The people don't come in there to see you bowl a bloke over in a couple of minutes. They come in there to see a good fight. And that's what you're going to make, a good fight. Give them value for their money. That's true, what Arnold says. You've got to set an example. Yeah, I've got to go. I've got things to do. You be here early. Yeah, I'll be here. That's what I tell you. I'm not taking any of that rubbish. That's what I'm bloody... You paid for it. You paid to knock it out. That's what you mean, Michael. If you want to take over the business, you've got to learn how to run it properly. That's what you're in the business for, to earn money and entertain the people. I entertain the people. Yeah, well, you don't knock them around. I don't knock them around. You're there for the shit. I never knocked them around. Mm -hmm. Or him properly. It's a bit of a lesson to you now, and, and um, just remember it next time. And leave it at that. Because the public are asking for them everywhere you go. People say, why haven't you got the... Why isn't there a box in here, or why isn't... Where's all the old tent shows? And... I suppose I'd be only one of, it wouldn't even be a handful of young showmen that would have the ability that I've got to work a tent show. You know, I've got, I've got the background, and um, the background, I've got the um, experience. I was brought up a spruker, my grandfather's a spruker, it's all in my blood, I'm a tent man. And I want to, I want to have tents. I want to box and tents, I want to have illusion shows. I want all them old tent shows that everyone's forgotten about and I want to bring them all back out again. And I want to travel all over Australia with them. I have one boy there that's uh, very particular with his equipment. And I have one there that is a boxing tent man today and a rough rider the next or um, uh, whatever he changes around. But I think he's found his goal now with the boxing tent. He, um, he seems to thoroughly enjoy that and gives every effort into it. And uh, I think he's realised now that the tent shows are dying away and the old tent showmen are not there to, to help them anymore. So he's trying to catch up on that era and uh, perhaps give his children or whatever the future into that past, you know. Mum's a showman too. Mum's a bloody... Mum's just like Arnold because she's been brought up around pop, you know. Um, Mum's spruiks on the board and she taught me the showman side of it. Mum's a good businesswoman and She's always correct for me and I can't take any of that. I don't like anyone telling me what to do. You know, especially when I think I'm but they're wrong. I don't like listening to anyone. But she got her own way of letting me know what she thinks. Sounds like Lyle and all that sort of thing. I learn a lot from my family. I like being around my family. My uncles and aunties and all that tell you a lot. You learn by watching them.
think later on. Are you looking for quite later too, are you? Nah, not me, mate. Oh, are you? Oh, well, Duncan was going to have a go anyway, mate. Yeah, yeah. Very well. When do you start? Oh, probably half an hour or so, mate, I'd say. Well, then, no worries. All right. See you later, mate. Hey, boys! This is your grandfather's territory. This is everybody knows you. And it's not so hard. You can, you've only got to beat the drum when there's a hundred people out the front waiting for you. Shipping it, I hope. Now listen here, old fella. Listen here, old boy. Uh, what are you doing, son? Do you want to have a go? One minute you've got your hand up, you're pulling a down. Next minute you're going to have a go at it. You want to fight? Well, look, you've come to the right place, old fella. But listen here, I'm going to give preference to the local men, you understand? Now, you're a local man around here. You come from Mount Isa? Well, all right, well, get up here and give him a good clap, boys. Give him a good clap. Come on, move up here, son. Now coming up. Well, what do you want to say now? I want to wrestle, but I want to, don't want it for nothing. You, you want to have a go in the wrestling bout, but you don't want to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. He'll have a go for nothing and he gets knocked out. Or gets Indian deadlock on him. Aye. Now, you'll turn it up at all right. Yeah, but you've got to have a go in the wrestling bout. Well, you don't want to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going to have a go for nothing. Well, listen here. I'm going
wants to see blood and stuff all over the place. They want to fight so they can laugh and entertain them. That's what the boxing thing's all about. <laughs> You're working the women, you're working the children, and you had to be able to put on a good show, you know. Get them excited, get them roaring, get them wanting to pull you apart.
got to eat it in. Oh, what? No. Just a bit, you know? Yeah. No more. <laughs> oh, well, dear. <coughs> Where are you going, Lester? Oh, back down to New South Wales. Yeah, uh, whereabouts? Catch the shows down there. Uh, Bob Edmund or West Wild on them right. too, yeah. Do you uh, want to catch they me? Might be, they might be lied on because mm. uh, we're not laid on They're out of All we want is a word with us this year. Last year it poured rain at both places. Mm. And, uh, might this year too. I hope it don't rain this year for a change. Well, you don't hardly get in there, mate, because we're doing anything down there. Uh, that's why I'm going to stay up here, because I can't stand that bloody rain on that down there. Getting your truck bogged at all the shows. George, you're mad. Man, when you get open the bloody ride up, there's a pouring rain. Every one of them shows. Oh, well, we got bogged last year at uh, West Wyoming. Young Troy and... Uh, right, you did too, and, that and pull out. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You told you how to have to. Four hours towing them out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> couldn't it was bad down at West Wyoming. Really yeah. bad. I just like doing what I'm doing, you know, I'm not really wrapped in my no ambition. My my thing is that I like just getting from town to town doing the shows and I'm not a businessman. As you could probably see I can get up there and tour and do all the other things, but I probably I can't even add up or anything like that. I'm not a businessman. I'm just a showman. Fair enough, if you've got it now and you're earning with it good good luck. But if it goes bad, something goes wrong, we're not gonna go out of the business. We might lose some of the stuff we got. But we're not going to change our way of life. We're still going to do what we're going to do now. We might have a smaller caravan. We'll still eat the same. You can only wear one pair of boots a day. See, look, I've been going to towns for 40 years, say. And you go to a same milk bar for 40 years and you go in behind the counter, it's the same old Greek. He's an old Greek fellow, he's been there since he was a kid. That's all he's done all his life is behind that milk bar. And you walk in and you say, God, you know, what a terrible life. You know, he spent his whole life behind this milk bar. And he says, G'day, yeah, here you go, and the show's on again, yeah. I suppose when you go out, he says, thinks the same thing, that bloke there, you know, he's, all he's done all his life is travel around Australia, you know. You've got to do what you've got to do, I suppose. How he must miss it, it can't be much fun. Roughing it in his luxurious trailer I'm sorry for him as he follows the sun Oh, pity the wife of the traveling showman While he hunts and fishes and plays for the pup She has to wear all those heavy big diamonds Oh, the poor girl never envy her luck Oh, pity the showman, the poor traveling showman. He can't remember which town is which. His dog cannot locate the bones that he buries. And the poor fool dreams he'll someday be rich. Don't pity the kids of the traveling showman. Wise are their teachers, how ancient their school. Early in life, they will pass graduation for never a showman's kid yet was a fool.